Welcome back. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, MetaZone, and Rovi. And today, we're going to talk about Metaverse Markov Language. MML, dude. Yes. And uh, if you don't know, that sounds super uninteresting, like the it, way we just said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of y'all are probably already clicking away, but yeah. all you probably shouldn't. All the developer, developers are like, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> well, so but, so, but this is something to pay attention to. This isn't definitely like... Not one of like the more like speculation type videos that we're gonna put out, right? This is more like we we've, we've identified some core tech that's yeah. going to change a lot of things in a lot of different ways for things that you do care about, like from yes. a speculative. That's a good point. So let's contextualize what we're about to talk about. So yeah. in our video yesterday, where we talk about the up the bitmap update, right? We're talking about the metaverse on Bitcoin. Yeah. So all cool, right? Mm -hmm. So the next step to getting the land out and all that stuff is to select a sort of an operating system for your metaverse. Okay. Well, that operating system needs some sort of standards yeah. that other operating systems are going to adopt. Okay. Simple standards like HTML and JavaScript, right? Pretty simple, right? Yeah. Everybody, uh, you know, uses that. Okay. Well, here comes metaverse markup language, <coughs> which is built on top of HTML and JavaScript. To do what? To create content within the virtual world that is interoperable amongst different worlds. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built MetaZone, the first app store for the metaverse. Buy, sell, and explore a new class of digital assets like our flagship game Rovi.ai. Support us by collecting your digital assets through MetaZone at MetaZone.io. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated. All right, back to the video. Okay, so let's explain what that means to like, <laughs> again, the, the non, uh, what's the word? Like the non initiated, like, yeah. from a, cause if you didn't know, even though we're just not talking about Bitcoin on or metaverse on Bitcoin recently, the metaverse isn't a new concept. Correct. It's been, it's been publicly available for several years on Ethereum and arguably, I guess in like the traditional gaming space, yeah. according to some people's definitions, but yeah, this is nothing new. The metaverse is, has been in development. Um, but interoperability is basically the um, the feature that allows like things to be traversable across different environments, right? Like as far as whether it's your avatar, yeah, the assets that you own, the the content itself that is deployed, yeah, the interactions, the functionalities, everything should be cross communication enabled, right? Yes. In the same way that we can go to a different country and we still own the same assets yeah. that we owned in that new country that, you know, we had originally. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine countries as different environments, which they are. Mm -hmm. They have different rules, different laws, different whatever the fucks. Yeah. But they, have, they have whole different con economies. But, but and they stuff. have standards like physics and math. <laughs> that's right. Right. Like that's what physical reality. Yeah. God has given us, <laughs> you know, a great framework of standards to operate on. That's like, right. We don't like traverse to like, you know, Germany and like we just fizzle away. Yeah. Or float. <laughs> All of a sudden it's we just, can just fly. Right. So that that is what we're talking about. He's building that like the physics of, you know, the virtual world that the developers, the creators can now like leverage to actually bring real, real stuff, yeah. real value, digital matter. Right. Yeah. Man, well, this is cool. We're dropping those analogies like like fire, dude. I, I guess, dude. I don't <laughs> know. Like like we said, we've been thinking about this shit a little too long. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely starting to go crazy. Yeah. So okay, let's let's get into it then. MML was brought about from Improbable. If you know who Improbable is, yeah, that's the company who uh, Yuga Labs, I guess, contracted, acquired, whatever, to build the other side metaverse. Big fucking deal. Yeah, here's one of the co-founders, Herman Narula. Mm -hmm. He's got a cool book. I, I listened to it on Audible, and yeah. it was great. Right. Um, and so uh, between him and a few others, it started Improbable. M Squared was spun out, out of Improbable, yeah. and M Squared is focused on these different technologies, one of them being MML. Yeah. There's another one called Morpheus, which is a networking technology. Yeah, that's what, if you go to their, what do they call them? Their trips? You yeah. Could, you you see like thousands of people concurrently present with you. Yeah. That's their breakthrough tech offering, you know? Yeah. Which is cool. I, part yeah. I participated in the second trip and it's mind blowing. Okay. Like seeing uh. thousands of people on screen all concurrently, like communicating with each other, like in voice. And it's not lagging, right? And no lag. That is pretty fucking cool. That's it's pretty impressive. Mind blowing. Okay. So they're on to something, obviously. Yes. <laughs> They're going somewhere. Right. And so they come out with this standard, so to speak, 
called the Metaverse Markup Language. It's creative, uh, create interactive, portable, multi-user 3D experiences and objects with powerful and familiar <coughs> HTML and JavaScript. Mm. So l let's uh, let's kind of watch this like um, yeah, I guess it has animation. to like restart, right? Yeah. So. So this is create an interactive multi-user 3D scene. With, okay, yeah, same thing. Here okay. we go. Yeah, check Explain this out. Explain what's happening here if you can. So in the code, it's basic HTML. And in this sort of animation, he's dropping in new assets. If you look on the right, mm -hmm. I can move this this camera around. So that way you can see that like, all of these are different uh, yeah. worlds, if you will, right? It's like they're enabling new, new things with yeah. this code in real time, right? Yeah, it says here, click the cube. It should update for everyone. So I'm in this world. I'm going to click in this cube. Mm. And now every uh, every other asset in every other world is being updated in real time. Mm. And so you're... Now it's not working, right? Because it restarted. Yeah, correct. I'm clicking on it and it doesn't work. And okay. so this is like a real time animation slash functional kind of proof of concept. Yeah. Right? Example. Mm -hmm. um, and so... It, I mean, at first glance, like it's not that, you know, groundbreaking, but I'm telling you, this is a big deal. Yeah. As long as you like uh, contextualize this, right? Okay. We see four squares. They're identical. It's like, so what? But well, you got to like add the context. Square one is actually Decentraland. Yeah. Square two is the other side. Square three is Hyperfy. Hyperfy. Square four is, I don't know, Somnium space or some new yeah. bitmap metaverse. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. As long as they all four of these different like virtual environments are are leveraging this MML standard or the developers who create content within these different worlds are doing that. Yeah. Then you can theoretically, I guess, create like some type of distributed ecosystem or experience, right? That where you could you if you own land and all these all four of these different types of virtual environments. Yeah. You could deploy these goods, these these functional content things, yeah. right? Because what they're displaying here is function, like actual code. That's the most important takeaway. Yeah. These aren't just statues. They can do things. You could program them to do stuff. Yeah. You know, you interact with something in Decentraland, it's going to affect all the other environments. That's right. That's the big breakthrough here. Yeah. So if you're a game dev, you can immediately, like, see the value in that, right? That's funny you mentioned distributed. I mean, that sounds a lot like what we're doing with MetaZone. Well, it definitely is. And... <laughs> And it's important to understand, like... I said it for a reason, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's important to understand that um, it, it's sort of like science. When you just make a discovery and there are other people who take that discovery and they go and verify it by making their own, you know, uh, tests and examples out of that discovery. And they <coughs> confirm, like, yeah, this is, this is something that, you know, cool that humanity has discovered, right? Yeah. Well, independently, both improbable and us we've come to the same conclusion it's like distributed content is the way to go and yeah. having the content interact with each other is the way to go yeah and so independently we've confirmed <laughs> like this has to be part of the metaverse this has to be a standard yeah and so here we are mml yeah i mean so this is just like we talked about bitmap over the last several days is like standards are critical like you cannot just even though you believe in something you can't just do your own thing yeah I mean, you can, but that's not going to like proliferate into some sort of like paradigm shifting yeah. wave of technology. That's not going to happen. That's not how, that's never happened in humanity's case ever. Yeah. Right. You don't, you can't just like one person discovers electricity and figures out how to like propagate it. And then someone's like, no, dude, it's like, you know, I, I have my that. own electricity. Yeah. And then we have like multiple different like grids. Yeah. No, dude, there's a standard of how like, you know, to facilitate this new technology. Yeah. And humanity has to like, work with it yeah it becomes a commodity that anybody can use yeah that's how the metaverse should work well that's how all things work so yeah it's like this is important because uh it gives developers that much more i guess like uh i don't know like it's just needed you yeah know? simply yeah. that it's needed to begin with yeah <clears throat> so this standard now so if you were to kind of like line up the stack of technology right you have like for example you have the bitmap standard right for a metaverse on bitcoin mm -hmm. there are other potential standards for something like this could happen on other chains right yeah but on top of that is the sort of like what we call the operating system of the metaverse right you have like its own set of technology yeah and um this sits within sort of like that operating system level right mm -hmm. developers use this technology to build applications mm -hmm. right to build applications yeah. for given worlds that that support this standard 
Mm -hmm. And so we're speculating that almost all new worlds are going to be supporting this. Mm. And so now we're going to have that expected experience of interoperability, right? Mm. You make an application or some sort of functional thing and using this technology and all of a sudden it can be deployed in multiple worlds. Yeah. So this is like the best outcome for the future of the metaverse. Totally agree. And like, you know, it's the metaverse is very difficult <laughs> like yeah. it, at, at face value. Like by definition, it seems like something that shouldn't be that hard to, I guess, actualize considering like, you know, how far we've already come, like <clears throat> when it comes to construction, constructing value in the virtual sense, like yeah. with video games and all this cool shit. Right. Yeah. 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 But like the metaverse though, is something, some other like extrapolation layer that, that requires a lot more rethinking, I guess. Like that's the hard part. Right. And, uh, that's going to take time, many, many years of development and lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's why M squared and Improbable is very well positioned to like, you know, lead this initiative. Right. Cause they are very well supported. Yes. Which is good. The industry needs people like this to like really lay forth things that, you know, smaller actors and participants can, can, can leverage, leverage. Yes. to create, you know, serious value. And yeah. the cool thing is, is we're leveraging HTML here and JavaScript. These are the two basic forms of languages that developers learn yeah. when, you know, learning code. Yeah. And so now if you know that language, you can participate in the mania that is the metaverse. Soon to be mania. Yeah. Right. Soon to be. Yeah. Correct. So I guess uh, now, now this is basically out is at least like the ideation of it. I mean, I think now they're going to start like actually getting devs like tinkering around with this stuff yeah and getting a <clears throat> an appetite for this so, th so even this is going to take probably many months for like a true developer adoption yeah in correct. that sense to come about and then you're going to see probably a rollout of like some actual virtual worlds we're probably getting closer and closer to that other side launch mm -hmm. because of this yeah. like now that you know they don't want to just launch a fucking mass scale metaverse world yeah. And nobody capable or knowledgeable of how to like build anything within it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a total f flop. Yeah. You jump in and there's nothing to do. Right. So th there's going to be a process here. They're onboarding the builders. So yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. The most important sector of humanity, the builders, because that builds the value. And then we have entertainment after that. <laughs> Oh, that's what it's all about, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, all we're just trying to do is get entertained. Ed entertain our simple minds, yeah. dude. That's all. You don't have to worry about getting eaten by tigers. Yeah. 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 Well, some of us do don't. Some of us actually do. Yeah. Uh, I, saw, I guess like, I you saw, saw that Twitter, right? Uh, that tweet. <laughs> I saw that too, man. I saw, yeah. I saw God. some dude get butchered by a lion today. I saw some yeah. other dude lose his pinky to a shark. <laughs> I was like, what's going on with Twitter, dude? You're just bombarding me with violence. It's crazy. Dude, we're on the same side of Twitter. You yeah. seen the two? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. It's hilarious. God damn it. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. So other than the violence. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's co we covered everything. We're going to be users of this as well. Uh, this is like a very fascinating tech to, from our perspective, just because we need something like this. We're builders yeah. in the metaverse. We mm -hmm. need this ability to have interoperable assets. Yeah. And then we're, if we're, if we're saying that, then we know all the other developers who are interested in yeah. building in the metaverse. That means I, I don't necessarily know how, like if Decentraland is going to integrate this. I'm sure they will at some point. So there's yeah. a lot of builders there who would want to do that. Um, a lot of new builders outside of Decentraland in general who want to leverage this. So it's, this is just good for the metaverse sector as a whole. Yeah. And right now in Web3, in total, it's like a $5 billion sector. And like mm -hmm. big, yeah. but not that big. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of room for growth, obviously. Yeah, totally agree. So this is going to help catalyze some of that growth potential. And then, uh, yeah, I guess that's as far as that. So like, and then of course, like, you know, the other side, and if you're a board ape holder, this this is good news to you yeah, too. Yeah, this is relevant, <laughs> right? And, and then if that if that's good news for them, there's like trickle effects. Then like all NFTs are going to start to maybe get some value perception back. Yeah, you know these are all things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things to consider. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's how these markets propagate, right? It's yeah. just like dominoes everywhere, right? Yeah. Like this is this is looks like nothing. Like if I was like a, a non developer, yeah. Like, dude, Snooze. you're trying to get me hyped by this rubber duck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it actually is bigger than what it looks like. And that's it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, anytime a YouTuber <laughs> is talking about code, it means something. 
I don't. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's a new one. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you're, uh, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. 100. <clears> percent <throat> All right. Well, let's. Uh, I think that's it for us. So we talked about MMO. Hopefully, we did a good job explaining it. Herman Narula, if you want to come on the podcast, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd let's, like let's to talk uh, about this stuff, dude. Yeah, just talk about all this and like your perspective of the metaverse and how yeah. it's going to roll out potentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If there's any questions, make sure you hit us up in the comment section below. Follow us on Twitter at the Blockrunner at Meadowzone.io and at Roby AI, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>